Austin Dolls. If you're at work, uh, take a little time to talk about the Packers if you wish. We are going to get started just a little bit. I have Facebook on the line. We've got YouTube. We've got Instagram as well. We are simulcasting yet again today with the preseason. And of course, as always, this is through Get Vocal with our patrons. If you are a patron and you're connected on Get Vocal, you can jump on with me. Just comment below and I will open up the screen and unlock it so you can get on as well. And if you're on Facebook or you're on Get Vocal, go ahead and let me know who you are, where you're coming at me from. We'll do some Packer Nation roll call as we get started talking about the Packers rolling out Aaron Rodgers against the Ravens tonight. This is a big one. And, you know, mainly we want to see Aaron Rodgers stay healthy. That's the number one thing. But I think Packer Nation has to be pretty excited about the possibility of seeing this offense run. We saw some really good stuff out of the wide receivers. Jamon Moore, probably the only one that had a little bit of an off day. Well, that might be. I might be understating it, uh, continuing to have a little bit of struggle catching the ball. And that is going to be something he has to get over and he's got to get it over, get over it tonight. Uh, or I suspect he will not have a spot on this team, even though he was what a fourth round draft pick. Um, let me see if I can get up our live feed on Facebook and see who's jumping on. I'm excited about this game, uh, nervous at the same time. I want to see – I think I feel like the Ravens are going to put out a little more than the uh, Texans did. We saw a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. We saw a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. Nothing wrong with that. But I want to see us roll out a little bit of the motion. We saw Deshaun Kaiser keep the ball on what almost looked like a quarterback keeper. May have just been a miscommunication to the running back at the time. We'll see if Aaron Rodgers does any of that stuff. Do we roll out any of Matt LaFleur's new wave offense? We haven't talked about it for a while. This is supposedly a new wave offense. Speaking of which, I'm going to wave at a few people on Instagram, simulcasting on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We're multitasking today. This is through Get Vocal for our patrons, of course. Jay is here. Robert is here. Linda as well. And um, let me know your excitement. You can heart me up on Facebook. And let me know how you're doing today. We got another game night. Um, I've got, I, I apologize, I went a little bit late. Usually I go at 1 o'clock. 2.30 is not uh, generally acceptable. I apologize to my patrons. I'm supposed to be doing that show at 1. I had a little time to spend with my daughter before she moves to Nashville. So dad just decided to stay with daughter for a while and we had a good time. Um, good to see everybody on Facebook. We'll check in on YouTube in a little bit as well. Uh, Linda here from Minnesota and Packers getting ready to roll out an Aaron Rodgers led team that <clears throat> showed a little bit. We're not going to have Aaron Jones tonight, but we did struggle to run the ball. But when we ran the ball, well, there were some good things that you saw with this new outside zone scheme. Maybe we'll see a little bit more of Dexter Williams <clears throat> trying to figure out who this third running back third tailback, assuming we're going to keep a fourth as a fullback. Now Danny Vitale tweaked as well. The injury situation, and now you got Oren Burks on the defense, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's not that good. I'm not happy about the injury situation. Uh, Lee says, hello, you are forgiven just this once. Well, thank you. I, I felt like that was a good excuse, but what I would have done, I did, it wasn't planned. I, I told her, you know, I went live at 1 to my patrons. She knew that, but the time just rolled around, and I have to be honest, I was getting a little verklempt. And I had to spend that extra time or I would have at least made an announcement to the change. But if you're a patron, uh, one o'clock central time on Thursdays is Patreon Thursday. And for my patrons, I'm working on what went wrong with the tackling week one. It's just taken a while to put it together. That's my go deep video blog that you get only as a patron. I won't be distributing that elsewhere. So Daniel's here from Florida. Dave says Williams looked good. And yeah, I thought Elton Jenkins looked good too because I had my eye on the offensive line. And I feel pretty good about what that group was able to do. But again, it was a very vanilla situation at that point. Um, we'll see if the Ravens bring on some more pressures, you know, um, four or five rushers, maybe more at times, and see how the O-line holds up. <clears throat> again, you field Aaron Rodgers. We've got to make sure he stays healthy. I want his jersey completely clean. We basically had, I believe, one knockdown last week. It's pretty good in terms of the quarterback protection. 
And uh, now heart me up. I want to see these wide receivers when Aaron Rodgers is throwing the ball, because you might have noticed, you know, I complained about Jamon Moore. His hand position is wrong. It just seems like all the time he's double clutching from underneath. And that's where you get those double clutching. Get one hand over the ball, catch the ball and bring it into your body. This seems to me to be fundamental. It's in his mind, I think. Not necessarily his hands. Uh, the notifications are going crazy. So some people are watching. That's good. And if you're on Patreon and get vocal right now, let me know in the comment line. I'll say hi to everybody. And if you want to jump on, you can get on the show. But Jamon Moore needs to clean those things up. But I will say Deshaun Kaiser, he was a victim of a couple of Deshaun Kaisers, or at least one very not good pass. Now, Deshaun Kaiser had some good passes. There are those that disagree, but he did. Uh, not what we were looking to see out of a guy that we're hoping can win a couple games, go 50-50 if we have a four-game stretch, something like that, two and two. A lot of folks want to see more of Tim Boyle, and I'm one of those folks. Uh, Terry says, I'm with you, brother. Need to hit the quarterback tonight. So one of the things we didn't see is the quarterback hits, the, the uh, sacks that we were looking for. We saw some good affecting of the quarterbacks, and we saw, I think, on the backside, much better coverage than we've seen in a while. I'm very excited about that. That doesn't mean we didn't get burnt from time to time. But the biggest thing on defense, I think that was a disappointment, was the tackling, the missed tackles. I'm breaking that down for our patrons. If you want to become a patron, that's patreon.com forward slash Packer Nation. Um, Ulysses is here from Saludos Disa, Mexico. Let me spin the globe for that. We're going to try to hit Mexico. United, this is for all the North and South and Central and Mexico uh, Packer fans out there. And let's see if I can get a decent shot today. I really want to hit this one. I must say, oh, and I blew it, but I hit Australia. Somebody from Australia, tell me you're here, and then I'll count it. Um, so I think we will see a little bit more today. Uh, the starters are supposedly going to play for about a quarter. and. That, to me, honestly, you know, you, this is game two. Game three is where you really have kind of your dress rehearsal. It looks like a more traditional approach to the preseason out of Matt LaFleur. And <clears throat> we still got to get through game three as well. And we may play a half then. Maybe the starters play a half. We're on that razor's edge. This is a team that needs offensive reps in particular with the starters to see what we have. The more you put the starters out, the more you run the risk of injury. And in particular, we're talking about injury to Aaron Rodgers now. Guys, we've seen it for two years. We've got to keep him upright and clean tonight and see what this offense can do. I suspect we will run the ball quite a bit. I'd like to see a little more 12 personnel tonight. <clears throat> I'd like to see a little Jimmy Graham, but let me tell you something. Robert Tanyan, Robert Tanyan looks like the real deal. And that's what we're hearing out of training camp. And of course, we saw the big catch athletic catch with the not perfectly thrown ball in the preseason game against the Texans. I really like what I'm seeing out of big Bob Tanyan. Clayton, Ohio on the line. And uh, Jason says, who's the starting running back? It's a good question. If it's me after last week, it'd be Williams. I'm assuming Jamal Williams is still not able to go because he hasn't been practicing. Aaron Jones has been practicing, but is being held out. I was I was pretty sure I'd heard LaFleur mention that, and that sounds like the storyline. I'm going to go with Dexter Williams on that one, so you can heart me up if you agree. He didn't get as many reps as I kind of expected uh, as the just recently drafted part of the Packers team and a guy with a lot of potential that fits this outside zone scheme really well. Uh, but I thought he performed well at times. I think the blocking scheme, you know, the blocking needs a little bit of work, and I'm still seeing out of all of the running backs, I'm still seeing a little bit of hesitation and you can't have a little bit of hesitation in this offense right now. Um, so if we're looking at the running back position, um, let's see who else we have. And right now the depth chart, of course, says Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams. But then you got the whole bevy of Trey Carson, Dexter Williams, Darren Hall, uh, Keith Ford, I think still around, but I don't think anyone, I think it's Trey Carson, Dexter Williams right now. Trey Carson got more reps than I expected last week. I think Dexter Williams bought himself some reps. Uh, he looked physical. Again, he would he did take a stutter step or two that I'd like to get out of his game at this point in Matt LaFleur's zone scheme. But I want to see more. He had me kind of wanting to see more of Dexter Williams. We've been excited about him 
in this scheme since he was drafted. Um, let me check what we got going. Sorry about the thumb. I've been getting uh, – there's a bird or something flying around my security cam. So, so I think that's all it is. So if, you know, the door gets beaten down and I get dragged away, hey, it's going to make for great TV, let me tell you. Um, but I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. So, yeah, um, this is a you – know, now our fullback situation is a little bit in flux. Danny Vitelli not able to, to uh, go, so we're expecting um, – Buchanan, um, what I can never remember his last name. We're going to get new fullback look. Uh, again, the question I have about Vitali is I want to see him uh, in his run fits, dead panning guys in the hole. I've seen a couple things that are a little bit of a concern to me. I'm going to be honest about that. And I'm, I'm talking about as recently as uh, this past game against the Texans. So I wanted to see more of him. I love the kid. And the guy is, his body is ready to go in terms of NFL football. I mean, he's jacked. Um, however, you need to see more. This is a guy that needs as many reps as he can get. And now it seems like everybody that we need to have reps out there and see what we've got. I think of Josh Jones as well is getting tweaked. I'm thinking of Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams for crying out loud. We don't know. I mean, you expect this guy to be the number two. But you want to see him operate in the system specifically. You know, the one we're going to roll out on September 5th. And we've got a lot of work to do offensively. And these offensive injuries are concerning to me. Now, with that, let's turn over to the defensive injuries. Let me pick up a few comments as we go down. And Wayne says, watch that inside side linebacker position tonight. That's what I'm moving on to next. So great minds think alike. Um, uh, <clears throat> Robert, how about Alan Lazard? He was very good against Houston. Yeah. I want to see him perform. And again, uh, you know, I think he's going to be thrown open at times. You've got to feel like this is a kid that after his performance last Thursday earned some reps, you know, what you have in Devonte Adams. I really would be hesitant to play Devonte Adams too much in training camp. I mean, he just seems to be able to get open at will. That's Devonte Adams right now. I really almost don't want to see him at all. I expect they'll probably roll him out, give him a few reps. I don't want to risk him. It almost makes me as concerned as Aaron Rodgers. Not quite. But for crying out loud, he's the he's the go-to guy right now. And I don't really think he needs a whole lot of work. So hopefully he stays healthy. And um, Lazard gets more reps then. Uh, Shepard out there balling as well. <laughs> Now, again, I'm expecting no Trevor Davis. Um, Michael, hey, Brady from Salt Lake, go pack. Tackling needs to be way better. Yes, and I am working up a Go Deep video blog for my patrons where we're going to break that down. I will say this, generally speaking. Um, a, it's the first preseason game. Coming off, the only tackling practice you get is a rolling donut dummy that is very predictable. Uh, but there are some concerning positions. I want to talk about body position. I want to talk about angles, of course, head position, hand position. Uh, but I also want to talk about where on these the field these things uh, are causing us problems. There are some that are it's there are some areas that it's just more difficult to tackle. I'll break it all down. My biggest concern, generally speaking, is we had problems all over the place. Part of it, you guys, we got to admit what you saw out of this Packers defense to some extent, especially in that extended six minute drive that ended, we ended up stopping them and forcing a field goal is that this Packers team was gassed. And when you, as your fatigue goes up, your coordination goes down and your decision-making your pinpoint accuracy of where your launch point is, uh, where your angle is and where your contact is made tends to waver. And those inches can turn into missed tackles. There was one or two that are absolutely inexcusable, but several of these I really thought had something to do with fatigue. But again, we'll break it all down on Patreon. But what I am concerned about is we made just about every mistake I can think of in terms of tackling. It's got to get cleaned up. It's got to start tonight. But I do think having some bad film, it gives the coaches, hey, the coaches could go out there and if we tackled perfectly, what are they going to coach these guys on? They had all these, they had all the turnovers. They played hard. It's the first preseason game. Where are the coaching points? So yeah, you're going to be coaching the outside linebackers. We got too deep a few times, but at least we've got something to coach on and something to look for. They need to, they need to clean that up in the tackling, but the coaches have every reason to coach hard this week. 
It isn't going to be a rah-rah session from start to finish. And then, of course, we're talking about the inside linebacker situation. And I'm not sure what exactly we're going to see tonight, to be honest, because, you know, you got Ty Summers backing up Blake Martinez, but he had double-digit tackles. Uh, he had what he is one of my examples on my Patreon Go Deep video blog. You got Orange, who we think may not require surgery. I am still skeptical about that. I I mean, obviously, the doctors know what's going on. It must have been very minor. Um, but James Crawford backing him up, Curtis Bolton doing some good things. But I'm wondering with the way Ty Summers performed, and he was communicating out there, and I thought looked relatively good, very active. He's got a full, pretty much a full game under his belt. Uh, if they try him out behind Oren Burks, if that's too much of a switch for him, if they want to make sure that they've got somebody backing up Blake Martinez that's familiar with the communication. So I'm expecting a lot of Crawford and Bolton tonight. And as was mentioned, mentioned, uh, we've got to keep our eye on that inside linebacker position. This is a spot where now without Oren Burks for the near future, and I'm still not convinced that it's not for the long term. Um, I'm kind of believe it when I see it on that. But there's, you know, there's very good reason to hope when Brian Gutekunz talks about it as being shorter term than we thought. Um, but I'm going to have my eye on that as well. And those inside linebackers are pretty important. They're off ball linebackers. They've tended to be devalued. But you look at Blake Martinez last season with five and a half sacks. So at least we know Blake Martinez is going to factor in pretty heavily. We know he does for different reasons. He's two years vested in the system. He's the guy with the communication device. He's a smart kid. That's what we were hoping to get out of Oren Burks. And right now, the biggest concern with that uh, left ILB spot is you're looking for a guy who can cover. That's what Blake Martinez, that's what's really not his forte, where the concern might be. And we've got to have a guy who can do that at that position. And now with Oren Burks out, um, I'm not sure we've got it. I saw some things that were concerning. You saw um, Ty Summers get beat. Um, the, the, the touchdown pass that should have been, uh, it was an incomplete pass, but his, his coverage was just awful. Uh, a good quarterback and a good throw, and it really should have been a touchdown pass because Summers got beat. So <clears throat> we got to watch, this, in particular, that co those coverage duties from those inside linebackers. It's going to be interesting for sure. Daniel says, happy game day from Manchester, Tennessee, as always. J.J. Rogers throughout his career had three good wide receivers at time last season and this season. He won't outside of Adams. Disagree. Um, and, of course, it rem remains to be seen. But everything we're seeing out of this wide receiver group is it's the deepest we have in a long time. That's what, you know, Packer fans tend to understand right now. <clears throat> Joe, status, no king playing today. And Joe, you know, if you're like me, I'm ready to either sad or angry face that one because we need him, number one. I think the team is better when he plays. Uh, but he's just been so unavailable. And it's it's getting to be a problem. Now, I will say, you know, Tony Brown out there looks like a baller. And Aaron Rodgers, you know, when Aaron Rodgers stops a press conference and says, I'm going to brag on Brown for a while, and then goes on to talk about how he's the first one in the building and the last one out. He's got the right attitude. We liked Jair Alexander because he's not afraid to talk. He's not afraid to make a little noise. Um, we like Brown because he's not afraid to make a little noise. So Kevin King is a guy, you know, this is a guy that needs to buy himself a contract coming up. <clears throat> and right now it's not happening. And yet he has the physical tools. He's got the speed, 4'4 speed. He's six foot tall. And I kind of liked what I saw out of him his rookie year when he was available. And then it just kind of is all falling apart on, on King right now in terms of just not being able to get out there. I don't think anyone should really give up on him yet, but I feel like we're ready to throw our hands up because the kid can't get on the field. And it's really, really disappointing. <clears throat> Now, I will say, I know we're expecting perhaps tonight to see Adrian Amos paired up with Darnell Savage, um, which is wonderful. I love it. And Darnell Savage is your starter eventually. I said from the beginning, though, don't assume there was the assumption that he's going to start from day one, and that's not guaranteed. And now the guy, he spent some time off at the safety position. Um, you've got to know your stuff. Remember, when Nick Collins came on the scene, he was making mental errors when he was a younger player, 
And there was there were people in Packer Nation throwing up their hands at Nick Collins saying, why can't this kid make the right decisions? He's got all the physical tools. Darnell Savage, I think I'm hopeful, you know, is able to have the time to get into the system, understand everything. And opposite Adrian Amos, with, you know, a guy who knows his stuff. But I'm going to brag a little bit on Raven Green because he wears number 36 and I love it. And I want to see him succeed. And for that reason alone. But I like what I see out of him to some extent. Um, and then, you know, five more um, safeties. Jamer, Natrell Jamerson, Trey Matthews, Will Redmond, Tyson, Ibrahim Campbell. That are all, I think, kind of long shots in a sense. Depending on how many of the how many safeties the Packers keep. As to which one of those really have staying power after your Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage, Raven Green now, and then the Josh Jones question mark, I think is still looming. And I've got to say, you know, what do you do with Josh Jones if the kid doesn't even get out on the field during the preseason? I mean, what a waste at this point. Second round draft pick, all the potential in the world, really, really a disappointment. So we move down. The I'll, I'll, Let me grab some comments here really quick. I haven't seen anybody jump on Get Vocal yet. I know my patrons, it's... It's going to take some time to build it up, but my friend list is growing. So that's a good thing. I don't know. This one is open to everybody in terms of get vocal. So I suppose, um, but I've got it locked down for now to make sure that we only have our patrons. Um, kicking competition. This thing is real guys. Uh, the kicking competition is in full swing. Uh, they're kind of trading back and forth, Ficken and Mason Crosby and Mason Crosby right now, having missed some time with his calf. I think feels a little bit of Ficken breathing down the back of his neck. And it didn't help Mason Crosby, and it certainly didn't hurt Ficken to kick that 63-yarder at Lambeau Field in front of the crowd, get the crowd into things to close out family night. Um, so again, you know, this is an offense we hope we don't have to kick a lot of field goals. We hope we don't have to lean on our kicker very often, but it's going to happen at some point. You know, Arizona last year. Uh, Minnesota Vikings last year could have not could have been a Packer win versus a tie, which is like the worst result in football. And then, of course, we're not even talking about Mason Crosby's absolutely terrible day against the Detroit Lions. So the Packers are pretty serious about this. We know that Brian Gutekunst, A, if you're an older player, B, if you tend to be injured, which Mason Crosby doesn't tend to be injured, but he had the injury so far that's held him out a little bit. B, uh, C, if C3, whatever, where I'm at. Um, if you have a big contract coming around, Brian Gutekunst does not seem to play the game of, you know, hometown discount or you've been a good Packer player, your Packer people. We're going to give you a little slack for that. It doesn't seem to be the case, i.e. Randall Cobb, Jordy Nelson, Mike Daniels. So Mason, just like everybody else, is going to have to go out there and perform. Uh, Mitchell's got a question. Will MVS make a huge leap this year? <sighs> I think all the signs point to yes. I mean, and it might take a little bit because Aaron Rodgers talked about dialing in the guy's speed. He is so blinding fast and six foot four. So it, it, it adds an element, not just with his speed, but when you've got a guy that's that tall and you've got to drop a ball in over him, it's going to take a little bit to dial in. Aaron Rodgers talking about this. He's like, hey, I threw one into the wind. I didn't have enough arm for the kid. And he said, I, that won't happen again. Um, but then he said he overthrew him the next time. So it's going to take a little bit. But I think this is a great night. You expect MBS to be out there. We'll see what, what the rotation is. You know, with the wide receiver group that we've got, you're going to have to have a lot of folks rotating in without a doubt. Um, and, uh, MVS though is poised to make, to have a breakout year. He really is. Uh, again, you've got Kumaro in the mix. And I think, you know, as much as I hate to say it, because if we don't carry Trevor Davis, we don't have a punt returner right now, but Trevor Davis with his height and speed is factored into that, but he's not able to play. There's another disappointment after having a good training camp. The guy was very, he's the opposite the polar opposite of Jamon Moore. He was 100% natural. He was making all the contested catches. He was making the catches on the poorly thrown balls as if they were routine. I watched some of that stuff and it was, it was exceptional. And he is for real, except 
if he can't get on the field again. Now we've got questions. I just don't understand. We're not able to see these guys uh, way too often. Now, what we've seen, it could be worse. I don't want to talk like the sky is falling because it could be worse. You know, the Oren Burks one was a big hit for us in a bad spot. Uh, but again, tonight we're facing a really tough defense. We're facing uh, a defense that might do a little more stop pulling than the Texans did. And they're going to have their starters out. Now, so are we. We're expecting better protection, uh, better play of the O-line. But this, this trend has me concerned. All right, let's check a few more comments. What do we got? Lee, um, yeah, I didn't, Patreon, I don't think we'll send a notification. Uh, get vocal should, though. We'll check into that. Uh, Watkin says Shep's been running the punts. Yeah. And I just have zero confidence. I must admit, um, right now I have no confidence in any of these guys just from what I've seen. Um, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, you could play this game because really, do you need a dynamic punt returner? If you can get a guy that can just catch the ball, you're okay. But we saw what happened to the Texans last week. And Trevor Davis has a ton of experience and he is dynamic and he is playing the wide receiver position at a very high level when he's had a chance. And I mean a very high level. When you see him naturally catching balls that are poorly thrown, those are the ones that throw off Jamon Moore. Hell, Jimmy Graham can't catch those. And I'm, I'm concerned about that situation. I'm concerned about the punt return duties, but you know, Brian Gutekunst, they're seeing more return, you know, uh, reps by these guys. And I want to see somebody today show me that we can do without Trevor Davis. Because right now, I trust none of them. I know there's guys with potential. But we, and I, part of that is the, you know, Ron Zook era making me very jaded. And early on, we had penalties on special teams. We had the big touchdown. And everybody's excited about that big touchdown. But the fact of the matter is, remember, was it week two? We had a big touchdown on special teams when Geronimo Allison, or was it Jones that made the tip? And No, Allison made the tip and Josh Jackson uh, took it in for a touchdown. We're excited about that as well. Very similar. What I want to see is solid play across the board. And what killed us on special teams was the penalties. Well, we had those and return problems. We had those. Uh, so I am I have very little confidence right now in anyone other than a guy named Trevor Davis. All right, let's take a few more comments. And Mitchell's got a good point. The morale is better this year. Um, Rogers talked about the juice. Now, this is the night that on defense, I think we're going to get a chance to see a little bit of that juice. A little bit of Z Smith out there. Um, a little bit of Preston Smith, more of Rashawn Gary with some other, maybe a few stunts thrown in, you know, Petten's not going to want to unleash the hounds. He's not going to open it up too much, but he, you know, they're, they're talking about this guy bringing everything in practice. So if anybody wanted to see that stuff, they're going to have ways to see that if they wish. So I don't think there's this keeping it close to the vest all the time is really, you know, necessarily going to help us out. So I would think if I'm Mike Petten. I'm going to, I want to, I want to rep a few of these things that maybe I need that, that aren't there. I'm not opening my full playbook, but I'm going to rep a few of these things that everybody has already seen what I do from last year, but I want to see this year's group, this year's starters in particular, uh, do it. And then of course, later on in this game, we're going to see, you know, bubble players out there playing for a roster spot. Um, and so that, that, you know, that to me is, is where it's at. You know, you're going to get a little action out of the starters. That's what makes this one more exciting than last week. Um, just, just stay healthy. That's the most important. Um, at Lee is saying right now on Patreon with all those penalties, I thought I was watching a Seahawks game and we need to see that clean up. I think defensively, that's probably job one right now. Um, again, I'll be breaking that down for our patrons in my get vocal video. And, uh, and then let's just number one priority job one overall is to stay healthy and we got to do that. So, uh, it's going to be a very interesting day. It's going to be a very interesting night. I will be going live, but I am the, so I have an Airbnb guest that is going to be downtown. She's a rep for a company and I'm going to be visiting with her, uh, probably be back here for the game. I'm hopeful that I'll be back here for the game. If not, I'll go live. 
uh, right from downtown. I did that. Instagram knows if you watched the show the other day when we uh, opened training camp, I think it was. And I went downtown. I'm going to tell this story real quick. I went downtown. Go live on Instagram. I do a little edgier stuff on Instagram. So I'm downtown. You know, the music's playing in the background. I came out of Barley Water Waters, I think, which is a cool spot downtown. Just a little tap room. Nice. And it's like 10 o'clock on, I don't know if it was Friday night or what. No, it was, I don't know what night it was. This, this was atrocious. But I had two people while I was going live that were so plastered that they threw up like right near like the show i don't know so i see a heart coming up for that some of you saw that and it was bizarre so i guess i'll you know i don't know it was way too early as far as i was concerned but that was the situation on the igtv so hey if you want a little edge of your stuff you know follow me on instagram at the green bay packer nation that's where you're gonna get that one but we'll be doing more with you guys on instagram we're simulcasting today with the preseason i thought i'd open it up to everybody um and help kind of grow the get vocal uh audience on on uh patreon so that folks that want to jump in if you want to jump in just shoot me a line and i can open up i can unlock it um so it's been a lot of fun so far uh injuries continue to be a concern tackles that that, that we talked about but we're gonna get a lot of good work and this is with a new offense we're gonna need to see more of that obviously we'll see a little bit more of the defense but all in all, if this team can stay relatively healthy moving forward and buy a little time to get back some of the guys that we need yet, I think this is a night that we're going to get in a lot of good work. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers talked about how, you know, I'd rather just practice because we can pull out all the stops. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, to me, I would want to ask Aaron Rodgers, though, sometimes for the other guys, and he talked about this too, to his credit, you know, traveling, getting used to the travel schedule. Uh, playing in a in a enemy environment on enemy turf and then having being pressed into service to perform there I think is really valuable for these young players and then even though they're not necessarily rolling out all this or pulling out all the stops um, executing at a high level you get a chance to see you know Aaron Rodgers what you know with the step and the, the coordination we saw a little bit of a snafu between Kaiser and I want to say it was Williams uh, no, maybe it was uh, MVS. I can't remember. It might have been a jet sweep action or something. Kaiser ends up keeping it. These are the things that I think we can iron out better in a preseason game against, you know, opponents that don't care if they kill us. Okay, let's, let's just put it, say it like it is. All right. Um, rather than in practice, which tends to be a little bit rarefied. So I, for one, I know Aaron Rodgers is not as excited about it, but uh, I, for one, am. So a few more comments. Let's see what we got usually go about a half an hour. We're about there. Uh, and Andrew, I like the statement, you know, let's get better than 3.8 yards, um, yards per rush tonight. Now, again, the biggest thing in that is a, we're, the scheme is relatively new to many of those offensive linemen. It may not be necessarily new to them, but if you got Elton Jenkins out there, yeah, he may have run that scheme. He may know it, but it's guys like David Bakhtiari that go all the way back to when we ran pretty much exclusively outside zone. And we ended up going back to a hybrid power zone. Uh, format, those guys are going to be able to just run it. But I think a lot of the guys that we had out there, Lane Taylor was really the only starter out there. It takes a little bit of work. Um, so yeah, so that makes this game important, which goes directly to your point. Let's see an uptick in the run production. I have nothing against that. The other thing I would say too, is we don't have any Aaron Jones, you know, average league leader and average out there. Uh, and no Jamal Williams, who's been with the team as well. Uh, our veterans aren't out on the field. These are guys that are coming in, hoping to fill that number three tailback. Maybe we keep four tailbacks and a run and a, and a fullback. I don't know. Um, but I kind of am leaning toward uh, three RBs and an FB right now. But, you know, we've seen in, pa in the past, teams can go through those running backs, those tailbacks in particular, pretty quick. And with Aaron Jones, you know, he hasn't been able to play, just now starting to practice. I mean, the guy looks ready to go, and all of this is precautionary. We know that, but it's still an injury. I mean, when it, when it comes down to it, he, we are still talking about a guy who is injured right now. So then you can talk about maybe he's 90%, but he's still injured. And 90% with his injury can become, you know, you're missing another two weeks very fast. So a little bit of a concern. They're going to see DM. 
And if you want to become a patron, patreon.com forward slash Packer Nation, you can come in at one of the levels. You can uh, write in a dollar if you want. And if you're on Facebook and you want to click the support button, you will get a badge with a heart in it and support our only content, which is our Saturday show. Trying to figure out ways. Keep in mind, if you're a patron, you're going to get um, bonuses on any of the giveaways, and you are also going to be a Heritage shareholder. Every patron up until the Heritage shareholder uh, time frame is done will be a Heritage shareholder. So we're doing out shareholder certificates for that, and I think we're going to do a T-shirt. I wish I could buy one for everybody, but it'll just be available. That's all I can do on that one. Those those get a little out of my price range. Um, and we do need your help. We are partnering with you. This is a new model. Guy, let me talk about this, okay? Don't jump off on me. This is the new model. I want to talk about this because Aaron Rodgers talked about it, right? You know, we used to post, and I still will post. On my Facebook Live show, I could do sponsorships and get paid and be doing commercials. This is kind of my commercial. Aaron Rodgers talked about clickbait and stuff like that, just trying to get people to click, trying to get people to purchase. All I'm trying to do is partner with Packer fans who like my content. It's a different model. And if you know Aaron Rodgers, have him give me a call because I want to talk to him about that. I want to say, Aaron, I'm taking a risk here. If you believe in what we're doing, I want to see Aaron Rodgers become a shareholder of GPN's Facebook page, a patron, that kind of stuff, and, and, and help us change the way content is driven. That's my goal. Because the fact of the matter is I have to make the mortgage payments <laughs> and it's a business and it has its expenses. And that's why these things happen the way they do. And the ads are only going to get more aggressive. So anyway, that's my commercial. But again, I don't spend 20 minutes on them five times a show. All right. So let's take some comments. Let's go back. Let's go back. DM is on. It was great to see last week, the throws to the middle of the field again from us. Hashtag tight ends. I am loving that content or that comment right now. Um, and I see hit Kuhn up. I would love to do that. That is exactly true. Now you had, um, Kaiser throw what has, I've heard it termed the medicine ball because the risk then is higher. And I said this all last year. That's why McCarthy's offense just didn't do it was because of the risk factor. But at some point, I'm glad we are out there willing to play football right now. We are playing football. And that includes passes over the middle. Guys are going to have to put their bodies on the line. That's football. Okay. There's certain things we can't do. They're going to have to wear more protective helmets. They're going to have their, you know, they're not able to make cut blocks. There's things they've done with the kick kickoffs that, you know, are taking away from the game. There's rules and regulations by the defense, but this Packer team is going to take advantage of that a little bit and go out there and throw across the middle, hit some folks in stride. That's part of the reason I think Jimmy Graham is going to have a good year this year. The only thing I want out of Jimmy Graham is let's get the red zone touchdowns back. Get him six, eight touchdowns, and all of a sudden the productivity is going to be higher. And the guy is going to start to perform up to the level of his contract. Now we still have decisions to make, but that's for next year. So there's a lot, I think, to be excited about for tonight. Um, and uh, John is saying, nice to see a road win. I agree, man. You know, you want to see this team be able to travel and perform. Um, and that's not so easy to do with a lot of young players. And, we're, of course, later on is when we're going to see a lot of the guys that are threes and stuff like that. We don't know how our rotation is going to match the Ravens rotation. I wish the coaches, hurt me up on this one. I wish the coaches would get together a little bit and just say, hey, listen, let's kind of try and work. These are our goals. You know, you don't have to name names and stuff like that, but these are our goals in terms of ones on defense and offense. Try to match it a little bit because I don't like the conversation if we play poorly about, well, it was our threes against their ones. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better, but come on. I would like to see, and I think the I think the preseason games would then be more valuable if that was, and that's just my thinking. I mean, you know, just an idea that came to mind, but it wouldn't take much, but just a little communication, you know, that, hey, hey, we're going a quarter with the ones. What do you think about that? Are you willing to just go ahead and match us in that regard? Obviously, you've got rotation that you have to do, uh, depending on how, you know, you get a long offensive series, you're going to have to rotate guys out, rotate guys in, particularly defensively. 
Um, but I think, you know, there's a possibility that they could do that. I don't think it would take much. All right. Linda says Jimmy needs to have a good year. Yeah, and I agree. I think I think the potential's there. But, you know, at the same time, you got Jay Sternberger. You know the Packers, Gutekunst in particular, want him to perform and get out on the field, get a lot of reps, and become the kind of player we think he could be. I think he can be a, a good starter. Big Bob Tanyan has been performing as if he can be a serious player. And those two guys might make guys like Graham and Mercedes Lewis expendable at the end of the year. Now, I would love to make those decisions at the end of the year, knowing that, hey, wait a minute, though, if we've got the cap space for these guys, they really perform and they're going to help groom up the next generation. So let him run out his contract. It's not hurting us. But that'll all come after the season is over. And uh, I hope. It ends in February. All right, guys. It's been great being with you today. Uh, I want to thank all of our patrons out there. You're the bedrock and you're the core. And uh, we're going to continue to build that. I'll be working on your show as well um, and trying to get more podcasting going. Uh, we're still dialing all that in. Um, but Get Vocal is the only place that we can really bring three folks on at a time. Once we get the folks on, I've got a notion that we can play a game show. We can have a lot of fun. So if you're not a patron, patreon.com forward slash Packer Nation. Uh, those of you that are on Facebook, um, click that badge with a heart in it. Get the badge with a heart in it. And if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. IGTV, you know what to do. Guys, it's game day again. And this is going to be a more exciting one. I hope you have a great evening. Tomorrow's Friday, rolling into a weekend. Packer football is back. All is right with the world. You guys have a great one. We'll talk to you again soon. Go Pack.